Hey, welcome to my channel. Are you a fan of antique pocket watches? Well, if you are, you're at the right place. Now, some of you might remember this watch from a previous video I did about the green plastic crystal and how it was uh, rusting the hands on the pocket watch. In this video, I'll be disassembling this watch this is uh, going to be of a three-part series video. This will be number one. And the second one will be about uh, pre-cleaning and then doing a final cleaning. And then the th third video will be about uh, oiling it, putting it all back together again. I tried doing it all in one video, but it just turned out to be too long. So uh, it's going to be in a three-part series. So let's look at this. Uh, this is a Hamilton. 974 and it's got 17 jewels the case is a little beat up it's got a few dents in it but i'm gonna try to work those dents out maybe a little bit polish it up and get the case looking good and uh, of course i'm going to put a new crystal in it i had ordered a crystal and also got some new hands to go on it because these hands were uh, pretty rusted up and they just don't look good at all so i'm gonna put, put new hands on it before I get started taking this watch apart, let's talk a little bit about it. Uh, like I said, it's a grade 974 Hamilton uh, 17 jewel, and it was made in 1908. And it's a private label pocket watch. What that means is, it instead of having Hamilton stamped on the inside of the watch, it has uh, the name of a... Um, watchmaker or a jeweler that sold these watches and what the jeweler would do is he would pay Hamilton a little extra money and they instead of putting their uh, name on it they would put his name the name of the jewel company and this one was uh, M. W. Bassett and he was a watchmaker in Hartford Connecticut and he had a jewelry store in 1906 he had that jewelry store for 25 years and he, the watches he sold, he um, had his name engraved on the back of the movement instead of uh, the name of whatever watch company that he sold watches for. Now here we can see his name engraved in it, the name of his jewelry company. Normally that would be uh, engraved Hamilton Watch Company. So let's open this watch up and look at the movement in the back. What's well, a nice looking watch. It's nice and shiny. It uh, doesn't have any oxidation on the winding wheels. And the damascening looks really nice. The, it's got gold colored uh, screws that really, they really stand out. And uh, it's a nice gentleman's watch. It's, it's not a railroad grade watch, but it's a really nice Hamilton. Hamilton made some really nice watches. Well, let's start our disassembly process. First thing we're going to do is uh, remove those hands. We use that plastic to protect the dial as we pry up those hands with our hand lifters. Now you notice those uh, black finger covers I'm wearing. They're uh, latex. They're called finger cots and I wear them to help keep the acid from my fingers from uh, rusting the watch or leaving fingerprints. Well, next we'll remove our second hand. Now, that second hand remover is actually a hand remover that I filed down real thin. I also use it as a uh, hairspring removing tool. So I just took some old uh, hand removers and thinned them down, filed them down real thin to get up underneath uh, the hairspring. And it works great for the second hand because it sits kind of close to the dial, closer than the hands do. Well, the next thing I'm going to do is remove this movement from the case. I'm going to take these case screws loose. There's two of them.
Well, now that I got the movement out, I'm going to loosen the screws that hold the dial to the movement. Now, Hamilton put uh, four of these screws in that has four dial feet on the dial. And I don't know why, if any of you know why, you can leave in the comments and let me know because uh, it's a mystery to me. Most watches have three of the dial feet on them, but for some reason Hamilton felt that they needed to put four of them on this uh, grade here. And there's another grade that I have that has four dial feet on it too. Well, now that I got the dial loose, I just take my screwdriver and slide it gently under there and just barely pry up a little bit. You want to be very careful if the one of those screws isn't loose enough and you start prying up, you could uh, cause damage to your dial. You could crack that dial. So you want to go very cautiously on doing this part. Well, I got the dial off. You can see those four little studs that were on the dial. Those are called the dial feet. Well, I got it in my movement holder and let's start taking it apart. This first wheel I'm moving is called the hour wheel. This is what the hour hand attaches to. It appears to be a little rusty on the end. I'm sure that's from that uh, green crystal that was in the watch. This next wheel I'm removing, it's called the minute wheel. And it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Next, I remove the cannon pinion with my tweezers. Just lift right up on it. It come off pretty easy. Now I'm putting all these parts in a little parts tray that I have to keep them separated and not get lost. Now this watch has a little band around the movement on the outer perimeter of it. It's a little ring and it's called a dust, dust ring and it keeps all the dirt and grime out of it from when it's uh, in your pocket. And I really like seeing that on a watch because it helps uh, keep keeps it clean inside and lets me know that uh, it's probably not too dirty on the inside. So uh, to remove it, we just go around the outer edge and use our little screwdriver and just work it, work it loose and it'll, it'll come right off. We're going to put our watch in our movement holder and the next process is to remove the balance. You want to be extra careful with the balance. It's very delicate. So a helpful tip that I learned when I first started uh, working on watches was to use my uh, phone and take pictures of the parts as I was taking them off and that way I could remember where I uh, where they went because it's pretty difficult to remember when you just starting and you're not familiar with the parts so just keep that in mind so if when you first start uh, working on your watches that uh, take pictures and that pictures are worth a thousand words well we got our balance uh, taken out. I always try to use that peg wood anytime I can. That's like a, a third hand to help help guide some, that uh, balance wheel out. Now I set it aside. Now let's start taking apart our crown wheel. This is called the upper crown wheel. And it has two screws. Most watches have one screw that holds it on there, but this, this one has two screws. Uh, just so you know, I, 
when I take all my parts off, I, I put them in these little parts containers to keep everything separated. And it also has a little cover you can put over it. Now I like to use this uh, blue putty. It's called uh, Rotoco. I think I'm saying that right, Rotoco. And uh, it's real handy to help lift parts out. And you can use it for all kinds of things and watch repair. Okay, now we're gonna be taking our ratchet wheel out and it only has one screw. Now one thing I did different in this video is that I left the sounds of me working on the watch, the screws popping and you know, just the, the sounds of me working. If, uh, if you have a preference of not having it in there and just listening to the music or uh, it, just leave it in the comment section down below. Whatever your preference is, uh, I'd, I'd like to know. So now we're going to remove our click. And if you're wondering what the click, the purpose of the click is, I made a video on how to unwind a pocket watch, and I show what uh, the purpose of the click is and how it's used. It also makes a clicking noise when you wind your watch. Now we're going to start taking our barrel bridge off. Now if you like videos about pocket watches, subscribe to my channel and also uh, hit that like button. I try to put new videos out once a week. You know I can't help but admire how nice these screw heads look. They're not all chewed up like a lot of watches I work on. Yeah, I wonder if this might even have been Mr. Bassett's own personal watch. Well, I'm pretty sure it's one that he serviced. He was a good watchmaker. He was in business for uh, 25 years and he had a prosperous business. Well, we just about got our barrel bridge off. They call it the barrel bridge because the uh, mainspring barrel is underneath it. Now I'm going to remove the winding pinion and the clutch wheel. Now we're going to remove our center wheel. Now that I got that out of the way, I'm going to be removing my mainspring barrel. Wow, look at that, that masking under, underneath the mainspring barrel. Nobody would ever see that except for another watch repair person. All right, now it's time to start removing the train bridge. Now it's called the train bridge because the uh, gears that are under, underneath it are uh, called a train. As I said before, this is a 17 jewel watch, and the 17 jewel watch was considered to be a fully jeweled watch. Even some of the old uh, railroad watches were allowed to be uh, 17 jewel watches. Now that I got all the screws loose, I take my screwdriver and there's a little slot where I can slide it in there and gently pry it up. You wanna be very careful with this because you don't want to uh, damage any of the uh, pivots on the end of these gears. Also, you don't want to take the chance of uh, cracking any of these jewels that the pivots go through too by prying up. Well, now I have my train bridge off. I'm going to be removing the third wheel This watch is pretty clean inside. I, I'm really surprised at how good it looks. Now this is the fourth wheel. Now I'm going to remove the, the pallet bridge so I can uh, get
get to the pallet which is underneath it so I can remove my escapement wheel. Wow, that screw's really tight. Somebody torqued that one down. But I got it loose. Well, no damage done. That's great. Well, I don't want to let loose. Put a little bit more on it. These screws are so tiny, it's just kind of difficult to get them out. I'm going to take my tweezers and just gently pry up on it, remove it. Now remove our pallet and gently, you want to be very careful those little two little jewels on the um, end of the pallet that you don't damage them. They're just uh, shellacked in and you could uh, damage them by dropping that or uh, bumping it. So just be careful. And now we can remove our escapement wheel. Now I flip the movement back over to the dial side and I'm taking apart the intermediate setting wheels. I've got to remove those for cleaning. Well, next I'm going to remove this uh, clutch lever. And again, I use a piece of peg wood to help me uh, with uh, removing this. Now this is a lever set watch, so I'm removing the lever. And now I'm removing the clutch lever spring. And gently pry it up a little bit. There's a little tension on it, so you want to be careful that it could go flying away. Oops, like that. Well, no damage done, I found it. And now I need to remove the balance from the balance bridge. There's two screws that hold the hairspring stud onto the balance bridge. I have to release those.
Great, now we got our balance removed from our balance bridge, set that aside. Take our hairspray or our balance, put it somewhere safe. Now I need to uh, remove the jewels from the balance bridge. These are, it has a cap jewel on it. I believe these are the smallest screws that are on the watch, or these screws that are used to hold the jewels in. Those gold parts really uh, stand out on this watch, don't they? Now what I use to remove the jewels is a jewel pusher tool that has various size uh, pushing pins on it and I use a piece of pith wood, a big piece that I've shaved the bark off of and I just push, push down on it and that jewel will pop right out. Sorry my hand's kind of in the way. But you can see the jewel, the jewel came right out. It's in a two-part jewel. You have the cap jewel and the uh, pivot jewel. Okay, now I need to remove this balance jewel from the lower main plate get it ready for cleaning. And remember, if you have any comments, just leave them in that comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. And again, I put it on that piece of pith wood and used that jewel pusher to push that uh, jewel out. Make sure you have the correct size uh, pusher pin to push it out. Sorry, it was out of frame. I thought it was in frame when I did it, but there's the jewels that have been taken out. I'm gonna set them aside, get ready for cleaning. Well, I'm looking at the jewels underneath the microscope. They look good, they don't see any cracks in them, so that's great. So we got it all taken apart and it's ready for pre-cleaning, and that'll be in the next video. And if you wanna learn more about pocket watches, watch this video.